Annabeth, I'm coming to you first on this. Your third collaboration with Mike. What is it about his style as an actor's director or the material he likes to work with that keeps you coming back for more? Oh, great question. Both both are are distinctly Mike Flanagan. His his material is always high stakes, high drama, psychologically uh, curious and deep and profound. And then the cast and the crew that he assembles is penultimate. And so I'm always in for a, a, a Mike Flanagan experience. What is the experience like when he comes to you with a new project? Is it a traditional audition scenario or does he come to you and say, I've got a role that is perfect for you in this new project I'm working on? Uh, well, because I have done, this is my third project with him, um, I think, or fourth, I can't remember. But um, because he came to me with this and he said, absolutely, will you do this? And I said, yes, sight unseen. And I never do that. I never do that. But I, I just know his depth and his, um, so, so yes. So he came to me with Dr. Sarah Gunning and I said, yes. I have to follow up on that. So you read the script for the first time after committing to it blindly. I, what, what was the, the most exciting part of the character on first oh, read for you? Gosh, for, for me, uh, uh, it was first the trauma of having to memorize erythropoietic protoporphyria and having to say it. <laughs> but, but really, it's just this genius world that he creates that, that defies kind of stereotypes and they're just real lived in characters, you know? Um, I just watched uh, two episodes last night in the screen and, you know, as Kristen and I are saying, it's just so we all embody these very distinct people and it's like we're a family and we truly became one. All right, Kristen. So clearly a whole bunch of Flanagan regulars, I guess, what is it, the Flaniverse? I think that's what people are calling it. Yeah. <laughs> a whole bunch of frequent collaborators are back in the mix. You are new to the mix now. What is something about stepping onto a set with a whole bunch of people who have worked together already that maybe made it feel like a well-oiled machine or just really struck you, enhanced the way that you like to work? Well, first of all, I really value um, the way that Mike Intrepid, Intrepid Mike and Trevor have um, really curated who they work with because they've gathered mature, talented, inquisitive, kind, thoroughly talented people uh, on levels that are generally overlooked actually when you're working for the most part in film and television. And because I'm older in my career, it really matters to me who I spend my time with. And so not only was I nervous to be joining a company of such talented people, but I also, all concurrently had an innate trust that he had chosen, they had both chosen people who were um, just had integrity. And so I, I didn't want to screw it up and I did feel conscious that I was the new person, but I also was excited to join a company. What, what is a, what's an example of a quality in that respect that you think is overlooked that you wish you saw more sets out there? Oh, they're honest. Like in my very first meeting with them, I, I had done my due diligence about if people enjoyed working with them. And obviously I love their previous projects, but they also said, oh no, we've, we've called people about you. And I valued that because that really matters. It matters to know that the people are coming together that have integrity and are there um, for the right reasons and are able to uh, support each other in ways that are not just on the page. Um, I thought that was stupendous. And I, I wish it happened more. <laughs> All right. I'm going to start to teeter into spoilers a little. Don't worry. We're going to put a big warning up and not release this until after the show comes out. But one thing I feel like doesn't get enough credit, we don't talk about often enough, is the value of a good reaction shot. And Kristen, basically every time you're sitting in the church listening to a sermon, your reaction shots are telling me something about the experience that your character is having. So while you are working on this particular project, do you feel the weight of those reaction shots more than on other things you've worked on? Uh, no, no. I mean, because, um, because I'm not... I don't think any of us were compartmentalizing it that way. We were there <clears throat> honestly uh, embodying the experience. So the church experience was exactly the same as any other scene. We were as invested in the way um, Father Paul was affecting the community as we were in any other shot. Uh, so I didn't, I didn't find it um, separate from my 
whole the whole experience that I had. But I I'm glad that they're that that clearly yeah. they're doing their job. It's it's a it's very a very telling component of the show where I did catch myself during every single uh, sermon as the show went along trying to figure out how certain people were responding to what he was saying. So it would tip me off on where everyone would end up in the end. Right. Right. Well, actually, to that end, I think there's some reaction shots uh, from cast members and characters that aren't in there because perhaps it would have conveyed something too early or something we knew, but the audience didn't yet. Um, but it wasn't, I mean, it, the whole thing, as Annabeth said, was just such a glorious, delicious meal that every moment we were on set, both we were both having hilarious fun and then also just really able to slip into the world, you know? I, 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 oh, I just want to say, Perry, that I think one of the, the that um, Kristen's character is such a ballast for the whole thing throughout from beginning to end her whole journey it's it's a privilege to watch her story because as you say she is kind of a barometer for for what we as an audience can see and Kristen, you're, you know like you know it's it's no small thing as women of a certain age to yeah. kind of, you know don prosthetics and maybe none of us are you know we're doing the not so glamorous look but but that's also really authentic. And I feel like you see that in every character on this yeah. show. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I agree. I have to ask you both about that, I guess that last-ish scene in the church in episode seven. Is that as chaotic for you filming it as it is for us as viewers <laughs> watching it? <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> I mean, it was well, it was well orchestrated chaos, but it was, it was for sure. It was for sure chaos. And it was, I remember too, at the time, um, you know, cause it was the midnight massacre since you're not, this will be a not, you know, no spoiler, but we were also, you know, it was COVID and we're running around with fluids, blood, you know, all sorts of background, lots of extras and actors and, you know, lots of emotions. It was, it was a lot of, we would come and like grab each other and say, okay, are we, we're safe, we're safe, we're safe. Yeah. We just kind of come home to each other. I have so many more questions I could be asking you, but I have to let you both go. So huge congratulations on the show. I liked it quite a bit and I hope I get to talk to you both more soon. Thank, Thank you. you. Good so questions, Perry. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed. Have a good one, everyone.